What's good, everybody? Boy HD, and I'm back with another reaction video. It's from the content creator, a uh, great content creator, by the way, Grant Collin. And it's called Imposter Syndrome and Cybersecurity. It never goes away. And as somebody who's been in the field for a while, I can agree. You always could possibly start a role. And sometimes or before it just kind of doubt yourself for whatever reason, even though you proved yourself like over so many years. But without further ado, let's get into this video. So I'm referring to starting my job and I message my boss and tell him, can I be real with you for a moment? And he said, of course, absolutely. And I said, well, I have a lot of imposter syndrome. I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. And I'm afraid that I'm going to screw something up on this team. The response was, welcome to this industry. Later then, my boss actually did. <laughs> it's funny that, that that's what his boss said to him because love and cybersecurity changes so much. Like a lot of times you probably honestly trying to figure out I even know what I'm doing sometimes. It's crazy. Like, I literally just started a new role. And it's something different than I've ever done before. It's, and I've just been looking at different terms and stuff I'm not used to seeing. So I've kind of been like, not necessarily doubting myself, but more so like, I don't even say can I do it. I don't know. I just feel indifferent about something that's like just way different than I've ever, ever did in a role before. So that's kind of how I feel right now. So I agree with his sentiments. So let's keep it rolling. It go on to reassure me that imposter syndrome is normal and that like anyone we all feel it in the it industry in today's video i briefly want to talk about imposter syndrome and why in the field of cybersecurity and it we always feel it and it's an always ever persistent reality that we all must face i have a lot of imposter syndrome when it comes to not knowing what the heck i'm talking about not being confident enough when I do know something, but I'm afraid that I'm going to get it wrong. And just having imposter syndrome with my skill sets that I've built up. So for those of you who don't know what imposter syndrome is or haven't heard of it, it's basically the internal feeling that you aren't as competent or knowledgeable as others perceive you to be. Yeah, that's, that's pretty deep. I know, like... Even on like a small level, I know for me sometimes like people always say, oh, you're smart or all these other praises. And I would always say like, I'm really not that. <laughs> I don't, I'm really so saying like I'm downplaying myself, but I think it's just, I feel like I'm just resourceful and I'm just good at like getting stuff done, but I don't feel like, you know, I'm Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory. I feel like I'm, I don't know. But when it comes to the skill thing, I, I just feel like that too. Really quick story. When I first started that, that sock job three years ago, I didn't really learn a lot at the McAfee job. So when I started this one, I was like, yes, I'm glad I got hired. But then I was like, how am I going to do? Kind of a little panic. Like, am I, like I got laid off in that previous role. Will I get laid off this? Will, will I be able to, you know, stand up this time? Will I be good enough? And what I found out was that first week. So story time, really quick story time. The first week that we joined, or actually, it might have been a second week, but we had uh, we were taking off for a different uh, provider for our client. They put us through this test to do make up like three different, like five or ten playbooks for rules out in their environment. So I found out right there that I was able to contribute good suggestions for our, um, the playbooks, like everybody else, which eased the tension of me feeling like I was like not gonna do well and not know what I'm talking about and not knowing how to get over myself and then thinking that I wasn't as skilled as I should have been for the role. But that's just a little brief thing and I may do a podcast or a separate video on that. But I definitely felt like that before and I'm gonna let the video keep playing and we'll talk about ways that help me really realize that I'm enough and I'm competent like everybody else. Therefore, your technical skill set, maybe your other skill sets that you offer aren't as good as the next and because people rely on you, say for industry expertise or an opinion, and you don't know, you aren't good enough to be in this industry. When you take a look at the industry of IT, what you will find is that it's a very broad place, very broad skills, lots of information. 
When you go one level further and you go into cybersecurity, you think, well, this isn't as bad as just general IT, but actually that it's just, it's very broad. What you find is that the further that you study cybersecurity or just security in general, the more you realize that you don't know that much. The IT industry and cybersecurity are ever evolving. Now, today you have one technology that is released and tomorrow there's a new one. And as cybersecurity or IT professionals, we have to be on top of what's hot and what's new, navigate through the buzzwords and the acronyms and find a source of solution to solve. He's right. He's definitely right. And that's one of those things where, I don't know if it's a quote somewhere or whatever, but you know, more and more you study, or I know Voice the Five Nine said something about a con man, but he said a wise man, a wise man knows that he knows nothing. And I think that's the key to getting past this. Always knowing that you're not gonna know everything. So in a sense you kinda know nothing. So always be able to learn something else. And also to get past imposter syndrome is realizing you don't have to know everything. There's no way possible for you to know everything because it's every it's new information every day. So there's no way you can know everything. Something's new is changing. When it comes to cybersecurity, like he said, it's very broad. And then there's so many different ways you can get into it. And it's just always something going on to where you may not know the next thing. Like I told y'all plenty of examples. Like when I started that role, like that really was four years ago. Yeah, four years ago that we were getting cloud alerts on S3 buckets. I had no idea what that was in my previous environment. They didn't have the cloud there. So that can, that can make you feel like, I don't know what I'm doing, but in all actuality, it's a new technology that a lot of people haven't been you know, exposed to. Even in big companies, they are still behind and going to the cloud space. So if you're watching this right now and you're having imposter syndrome by anything you're learning or your new job, just realize, Everybody had to start up somewhere and it's okay. It's totally normal, but I'm gonna keep on letting this go for a little. Solve a problem for a business. So as a new cybersecurity professional or, you know, a student turning into the professional career, what you find is that imposter syndrome is huge. When people rely on you as an expert or an answer, and you don't know what you're talking about. Or you learn something and then you realize just how much you don't know. Imposter syndrome really kicks in. Oftentimes, cybersecurity professionals, security professionals, whatever, IT, they feel like they're frauds because maybe they're in this industry, they're getting paid, but perhaps they don't know everything. Unlike other professions, IT, like I said, is an ever-evolving field, and that's uh, a double-edged sword, as they say. It's good because you get to learn a lot of new things, but also you're almost always playing a game of catch-up to learn those new things. So as a new cybersecurity professional, I, I mean, whatever, professional, associate, whatever you want to call it, I feel an immense amount of imposter syndrome. I don't want to screw up. Um, even when I do know something, <clears throat> oftentimes I become fragmented. I can't articulate what to say because I don't want to be wrong. And I fear that when your team or when. Well, he said a lot. Um, I can definitely feel the, the fear of being wrong, but at the end of the day, it will happen. You cannot be a hundred percent right. Uh, another quick story of things that. You know, just happened in a career when I was working to knock. I, the simplest thing, I messed up on, messed up big time on a report that everybody sees in the organization. And, you know, got chewed out for lack of better words for it, even though I think they handled that wrong. That was a, enough to really destroy my confidence, but I didn't let it, honestly, because I felt like it was on them. But it's just one of those things. I've not always been right when it came to working an alert. I've missed some things at times. I've gotten some questions wrong, said not said the right thing in meetings. It's okay. It's life. Now, 
as being a newer person in the industry that doesn't have a lot of work experience and that goes from just IT to just even cybersecurity. What I did was that I just found all the smart people that did know the things that worked the that wrote the processes, the procedures and everything. I I pretty much, you know, looked up to them and researched a lot of documentation and pretty much that's how I got sure of myself. So once they started co-signing, hey, you're doing the right thing, that's how I started stepping out of that. Okay, I'm good. If the smartest guy on the team is telling me, then hey, I'm okay. And so that's kind of one of the things that you need to do as well. It's kind of like that's kind of you can reiterate your skill set. Like try to get the affirmation. It's a big thing when you're new to get somebody who really knows everything that wrote the process that you're possibly following or did it a thousand times to tell you that you're doing it well. But we're going to let this play for a little bit longer and then we'll probably wrap it up. So let's go. Other people come to you and they're asking for this and you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the answer, but you're the expert who's been hired. Well, it's just a lot of imposter syndrome. Now, I am a firm believer, and this is coming from, you know, a younger kid, but I'm a firm believer that if you take a look at rates within the cybersecurity industry, people who've had years of experience, the ones that truly, I think, are authentic are the ones who kind of admit that they've gone through periods of imposter syndrome because you, you can't know everything in IT and people who tell you otherwise, I, I think are just trying to maybe prove something. So as students entering in the industry or as new cybersecurity professionals or people who have 15 year experience, what can we do, right? I mean, this is a kid's opinion, but in my opinion, to combat imposter syndrome, there's a few things. One is reverting back to the basics being a firm believer in what you do know. If you are good at a particular set of skills or if you're good at programming in a language, be confident in that. Now I should- I'm gonna try to stop at the every point. That's a good point. I preach this all the time, being self-aware, knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. No way to really feel positive syndrome about this. Say, hey, I'm skewed at this. I'm not the best at this. I know this like the back of my hand. I don't know that yet. I'll get there. But well, he's definitely right. Always going back down to the fundamentals. If you're a boxer and you're getting all flashy and getting caught with stuff, get back to just throwing your pumping that jab out, keeping your hands up. Like, you know, get back to it. That's all you got to do. I should absolutely be internalizing exactly what I'm saying to the camera. But in my opinion, reverting back to the basics and being a firm believer in knowing the foundations, whether it within technology, skill set uh and just your overall confidence take a look at the past maybe there has been a part of your life that you thought you couldn't tackle a problem but you ended up doing that number two is that you can't know everything there are new concepts there are new he's definitely right about number two let me see if he's gonna say anything for number three for you today but let me get back with you and you go back the drawing board work on finding that answer or building that skill set and i think another way to combat imposter syndrome is knowing that it's never going to end which is sucks there are periods of time that you may be really confident in what you know and maybe oftentimes there aren't it all right man I'm gonna put the link in the description, but overall, uh, I enjoyed the video, especially it's kind of refreshing, not refreshing, like in a good way to see somebody dealing with it. But like, I think a lot of people probably look to him for advice and guidance in the cybersecurity industry because he's documented like over, I don't know how many years he's been a YouTuber, but him, you know, they may perceive him as being all knowing. He's letting you know, hey, I don't know everything, but I do know what I do know and I'm learning and I know that I'm going to never know everything. And that's important to always know. If you can always remember that you're never going to know everything and to not let somebody else make you feel like, you know, you should know that, like you should be good. Because, you know, you see job descriptions telling you about different technologies, talking about 10 years or such and such when it's only been out a year. So kind of knowing different things and doing your research and uh, just doing good on your, uh, you know, maybe I might do some quick facts. It's like one, like I said, to reiterate, get all the information you can from your superiors and 
And if they co-sign you, that means you're doing well. You can kind of ease up on feeling like you're not good enough. Two, documentation. Always reading the processes and procedures. That way you can make sure you're doing things you know, the way that's supposed to be done. Three, one-on-ones with your manager that can reaffirm you're doing good, you're doing bad. It's really an underrated thing to have one-on-ones with your manager, definitely. Number four is like your your stats quarterly or every year, like checking like how you're doing and everything with your projects or what you're accomplishing, your teamwork, everything. Like and you know, just see what people are saying about you sometimes. And I believe that can help you ease your uh, your tension and your pain. We have imposter syndrome, but those were four quick uh, four quick tips that I thought about. Um, what are some of your tips for imposter syndrome? Please leave them in the comments below if you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like and share it out for the YouTube algorithm. And as always, let's.